uh pound for pound sports entertainment hit the like button comment below share do all of that right now it's your host f merit we talking with the legendary nate campbell what's going on champ man nothing so much man how's everything going man we good we good man um the date is july 29th it is now official um earl spence terrence crawford who do you got since it's now official this isn't a fantasy fight anymore Oh, man. You know what? I've always said the same thing. I give a small edge to to, to um Errol. Everybody else is like, oh, it's just runaway talent difference between Errol and Errol and, and Terrence. But I'm like, dude, one is a career welterweight. A career welterweight. Not coming up in weight. Actually coming down. Um, And then you get to talking accolades. I, I have to put it all out there. You get to talk to accolades. You get to talk in what one is done. You said big spot you up there. What one is done up over the other. But one is dominating the whole division the whole time he's been there. Mm-hmm. And fought the very best guys available there. So I have to lean to, I've said this for a long time. Errol Spence is the best welterweight in the world. Period. Until Terrence beats him, Errol is still the best welterweight in the world. Mm-hmm. No if ands buts and maybe. And I'm not saying that saying that he can't be beat by by, by Terrence. But Errol is the best welterweight in the world. Okay. Okay. Uh you know, tickets just went on sale. Somebody shows me otherwise. Tickets just went on sale uh like what? They had the pre-sale Thursday, the, the public tickets went on Friday. Will you be in attendance? You know what? I don't go to fights like that anymore. If I'm not working, I don't go. I watch them on TV. Okay. I don't have to get in the rigmarole, the scrum. I ain't got to get in all that. Okay. What do you do? I, 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 I guess I'm, I'm also, I'm so vocal about the way I feel about so many fighters. Um, A lot of fighters feel some kind of way about it. So I stay out of the way. I speak my pieces out of the way so I don't have to. I had, I had a fighter step to me one time. I had to tell him, I'll break your neck, kid. This ain't, this. And so I, a lot of these kids can't take, they can't take criticism. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, 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 had I, kid, I had let one kid know I drove here. You know that, right? <laughs> I got you. Uh, what do you think took so long for it to happen? As far as this uh, fight, I think, I think that I think that the fight is. I think it's a little bit. I think it's about two years beyond when it should have happened. Mm. But I think that has a lot to do with promotional companies, the money that they're trying. Everybody was trying to get. That makes it hard, man, when they, all these kids want 10 figure pay day, 8 figure pay day. Mm-hmm. You know where I come from? You know where I come from? I, in my day, I was I, I just wasn't going to get those kind of fights. Nobody wanted to fight me enough. There was nobody that wanted to fight me. So my, for me, I took the, the, the high six figure pay days and made it work. Because I, when I did get a seven figure pay day, every time I was off of one, they wouldn't take the fight. Mm-hmm. When do you expect the fight to break out? At the way in. Mentally, some kind of way that fight's going to break out the way in. Relax, kid. Mm. They said that um, I think the press coverage is supposed to be next week. So, I mean, I don't expect these guys to be up there talking crazy like, you know, Tank and Ryan or... You know, just a lot of bad blood, but I I, I do well, expect. Well, it, well, I think these kids were amateurs together. They want to say amateur. Mm, mm. And I think Terrence went off to somebody's mouth and and handled his business, and and that's why he didn't make the team. Mm, okay, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Now, allegedly, it's a two fight deal. Do you prefer a one and done, or would you prefer more two fight deals when it comes to big fights? I, I prefer two fight deals. Mm-hmm. I think that unless it's a bad, brutal knockout, one way or another, we perfect example is the Tank, not Tank, Devin Haney versus Lomachenko. That was a trash. That that was trash either way. If you gave it to one guy or the other, then you have to fight again. Mm-hmm. I was about to ask you about that. Like, what do you think Devin Haney should do after beating Lomachenko? Man, he, did, he, did he beat him? Because I'm sorry they gave him the decision, but did he beat him? I mean, I had it it, I had it close. Yeah, I'm saying it was close. It was a close one. It could have went either way. 
you know what I'm saying? I love the fact that Apollo Creed in the second Rocky said, I beat him. I won, but I didn't beat him. Mm. Mm. That's the kind of fight you're in. Mm-hmm. But my thing is, I'm so sick of them calling Lomachenko a uh, perennial Hall of Famer with three losses in less than 20 fights. Mm. Mm. I mean, you think it's just built off his, uh, just him being the, be- the best amateur fighter of all time? Yeah. Is he the best of all time? Because Mark Breland got one loss. Mm. Mark Breland got one loss. And he fought in the air when you had the bump. Is it really? Is it? You think it's just politics? Just like, you know, Bob Arum and certain guys at the top rank? Let me tell you something. Do you realize that Mark Breland never lost it on the international stage? Mm -hmm. Never. He lost one time in his whole amateur career. And he wasn't fighting little kids. Mm. Well, at the end of the day, dude, no offense, everything was set up for that young man. Mm. Do you realize that everybody he fought, even the guy he lost to, was picked to lose? Mm-hmm. They picked him to lose. And he got beat up. It's my Salito? Salito, dude, and Salito, remember now, Salito fought in my era. Mm-hmm. Salito wasn't, a, he was, he was a tough, he was a tough journeyman at one point. They said he just became he just fought to became champion. Mm-hmm. Salido was always a solid guy, but he wasn't no worry. He, it wasn't like he who did, go go look at Salido's record. He wasn't beating Eric Morales in his prime and Rare in his prime. He wasn't beating them kind of guys in their prime. He beat good fighters. I'm not saying he wasn't a good and he, he was. I love Salido. Salido one of my favorite fighters. But but now all of a sudden. They were calling him one thing, but then when he beat Lomachenko, they called him something else. Mm-hmm. Well, think about it. Mm-hmm. How they changed the spin. Lomachenko has always been overrated to me. Mm-hmm. Always. Now I say that to his face. Yeah. I mean, it, it does seem like he's always got some kind of excuse when he does. Like he just can't just take the loss and just be like, you know, I just ran to the better man today. Well, but even but the fight was close. But I think it's got to run it back. Yeah. Run it back. If you won, run it back. You and think? Devin ain't, Devin ain't, ain't no dude. I'm no Devin. He ain't no he ain't no prize to me. Not saying I don't like him. I mean, but if you're asking me from fighter, a, judging a fighter, because I'm a fight fan first. I don't like fighters. You ain't gonna hear me. It's very seldom you hear me talk about a fighter. You hear me talk about fights. Have you ever heard me tell, oh man, other than Aaron Pryor, some of the old heads, you won't hear me talk about fighters like that. I talk about the fight. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you you think David Haynes should give Lomachenko an immediate rematch or go up to 140? They should turn around and fight right away. First of all, this that fight should happen in four months. Mm-hmm. Enough of this waiting a whole two, three years and come up and wait. No. No. When Sugar Ray Leonard lost to Duran, he fought him four months later. Mm-hmm. Enough with this picking and party joke these kids. You know why? Do you realize why the Lomachenko? They, why why he ended up where he is right now? Why? Because he never Devin Haney, all of them never had to go through the chitlin circuit. Mm. Back in the day, you had to fight through the chitlin circuit when I was coming up. Mm. You had to run across a guy by the name of Emmanuel Augustus. John Tree, them kind of guys. Mm-hmm. Rotate. You think you think that's why when a when a fighter actually does take a loss, it's kind of like they've been built up, so they don't really know how to yeah. deal with it. Okay. I've said it once. I said again. The, the most important man in any promotional company is the matchmaker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The fixes in the matchmaker, baby. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Relax, son. Relax. Allegedly, Devin Haney was talking about going to 140 and trying to fight uh, Regis. How do you think hey, that no, fight goes? Program beat him to death. Program will beat him to death. See, one thing you got to remember: Program can make 140, and Program gonna fight you. Mm-hmm. You better take the hundred. You better stick. See, 140 has always been a dumping ground for guys who really ain't that special. Then you get a you got a special guy that nobody else will fight. Program is that special guy with that that tone in him 
that will fight anybody. Mm. Borgre will beat him up. So, oh, uh, speaking of 140, we got T.O. taking on Josh Taylor in like what next week? How you think that goes? I don't, I don't know. Because both of them, both of them show show they, they can show up and, and and stank up the joint and need some help from the refs. <laughs> And I love, do I watch T.O. growing up. Man, T.O. just is, see, like he, he going through so much in his personal life and I can see it in his boxing. Mm. I think he needs to change his father and get a real trainer. He's taking you as far as he can with the basic opponents. He lost to George, whatever his name is. Cambos. He lost to Cambosis. Cambosis, dude, stop. Cambosis, Cambosis is that guy that was in the right place at the right time. Mm. Yeah. Uh, maybe... I looked at Cambosis fight I told somebody I'd have broke Cambosis mm. I'd have got off the couch and broke Cambosis I ain't think but I thought the Cambosis, Cambosis would have fought harder in Australia than he did yeah yeah. it ain't nothing personal I'm just saying when, when I stack him up when I, when I stack I got I look at the guys that I had in my in my division when guys talk trash about somebody, me and me and somebody was talking said 135 is the hottest division in boxing. I'm like, really? All because of what? Social media? Because they ain't fighting nobody. And we begin to go through who was in the division, who was in the division. They couldn't tell me nothing but like three or four guys. Mm-hmm. I said, now go back and look at when I was fighting at 135. Tell me who was there. We got like 12, 15 deep before they stopped and said, damn. They didn't realize how tough my division was when I fought. It was it was Nate Campbell, Manny Pacquiao, Marquez, Casamayor. Um, it was um, Joan Guzman. It was Julio, Juan, David Diaz. It was Chico Corrales. It was Castillo. Shall I keep going? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Popo Freitas. Shall I keep going? <laughs> I mean... Shall I, so, so for me... They said, well, it's different ears. No, you can't tell me it's different ears, but then you want the same accolades that these guys got. Mm-hmm. You want to call them all-time greats. I fought with a whole bunch of all-time greats. I fought in the same division with the, some of the greatest fighters ever. I fought with the I, I, I fought the greatest Cuban fighter ever, Joe Casamayor, and I beat him, but they gave him the fight. Mm-hmm. So when you and I'm, it's not about me, but if you ask me how I judge a fighter, I judge a, I judge fighters by the the greatest era, the greatest eras I can think of off the top of my head. And if you don't like that, that means you're just doing it for the business part of it. Mm-hmm. If you don't like it for, for the historical value of it, mm-hmm. I, I I made a statement the other day that pissed a lot of people off. They wasn't made more money than anybody in the history of boxing. I said not true. I said in 14 fights, if you do, if you if you go by the if you if you deal with the way that the, deal with the way that the money was made, what the inflation rate was, Tyson made more money in 14 fights than Mayweather made in 50. Mm. And I, I because because I I've done the sit down work. Mm-hmm. So no, I don't. I think these guys. Are, I think there's, there's 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 a few really good fighters out there. All time greats. We don't know yet. They, and, they, and we put we put we put these tags on these guys. They're guys who are not in the Hall of Fame, like Montel Griffin. Montel Griffin is not in the International Boxing Hall of Fame. I don't understand this. He beat James Tony with fourteen fights, fought him twice. But you don't give him the same leeway and lat- latitude that you give Lomachenko. Think about what you, what I'm saying, and, I'm, and and that's just what I'm saying, man. Y'all keep hanging a lot, not you, but so, so many people keep hanging this this goat, this goat moniker on these guys. I'm like, dude, let let's stand them up five. That's why you that's why you don't go into the Hall of Fame for five years because you stand you have to stand up their career next to the generation behind them. I stand my career up against anybody fight because I fought everybody out there. And I never changed words, so. Whatever it is, it is. 
on my another guy that's coming up to 135 and wants to fight Devin Haney. She course Steve. And I think he's probably the most polished fighter of the bunch. And let me tell you something. Ain't no way in hell he could have been in the ring eyeballing me the way he was eyeballing me and me not say nothing to him. Mm. I'd have to face him like a man. They ran out the ring like 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 they were scared. They you'd have thought that you'd have thought that Devin Haney has seen the three headed dog, the three headed that three headed dog that fought with Hercules. Mm. You'd have thought he was looking at Medusa. Yeah. Ain't no dude, these these dudes, man, they play these 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 absolutely these absolutely BS games, man. These games are bullshit jiggity, man. When they when ain't no way a man can keep calling me out and I don't say nothing. Mm-hmm. Dude, what if Amir Khan called me out, I said send it, I said send the contract. When 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 um Anthony Davis called um Peterson. Anthony Peterson called me out and said, send the contract. Ain't nobody never called me out and I ain't say, come on with mm-hmm. What I was saying. Ain't no way. You can't, you undisputed. You supposedly undisputed. And you, and you, you backing down from a guy that came up from 126. Mm. The hell you preach. What's your thoughts on uh, Javante Davis? He is, he is doing what they say he can do. I mean, why won't he get? Why wouldn't he give um, Pitbull another fight? Mm-hmm. See, here's my issue. I can I can point fingers at the, at the guys that these guys wouldn't fight. Why they point fingers at me for the guys I did? Mm-hmm. And this here of the old. This feels the oh, it's killing boxing because you can't get the best fights. A man is done if he gets a loss. What the hell? All of the greatest fighters that came before us had losses. Mm-hmm. When they fought the very best guys in their prime, sometimes they call it hell. That's what boxing is about. You think it's just because a lot of these guys just been built up so high, like oh nobody could beat them. So when you know you find out, it's like okay, these guys really aren't who we thought they were. Man, let me tell you something. There's an old-fashioned game out there in the street. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That none of these guys are playing by. Everybody's a promoter. Everybody's a fitness man. Everybody got, is making an inflated dollar. And in the process of getting an inflated dollar, everybody, every, everybody is, everybody is Superman. Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on Tank Davis having to serve out the rest of his 90-day sentence in jail? He should have stayed his ass out and keep away. Mm. I don't feel sorry for you, baby. I've been in jail before. You know what I'm saying? I was facing prison on multiple occasions. I knew I sat in foot away. He got all he got all the money he can stand. And you can't stay out these people away. Mm. See, I'm old fashioned. I'm old fashioned. I, I, I stay out the way. What advice would you give Tank and his team about staying out of trouble? First of all, his team got to stand up and call him out on his bullshit. You can tell that ain't nobody telling him what, what's what because he's doing whatever he want to do. When he showed his ass out there, when he showed his ass out there, grabbed that girl out of Miami, first of all, if she'd have been, if she'd have been my little sister, I'd have came and saw everybody down there. Mm-hmm. Everybody down there. In the state of Florida, you don't put your hands on nobody. Mm-hmm. Especially if they got brothers. Mm-hmm. Uh, switching switching gears back to the welterweight division. Um, if Terrence Crawford beats Earl Spence, how do you think he would do against Jamel Charlo? Jamel is. Well, let me tell you something. Jamel Charlo is a different animal. Errol is big, big, big. Terrence, Terrence don't have to lose that much weight to get to 47. Terrence Crawford. I stood next to Terrence Crawford so I'm next to um but um against um Errol Spence. I swear to God he was 190 pounds. He was big as he was big as Charlo that day. 
he was big as the Charlos that day. Hmm. We was in New York City. Me, um, Errol Spence, both Charlos, um, Jared Hurd was there, who was huge. Yeah. And Jared, yeah, Jared is huge. Um, all of us were there. Um, 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 Julian Jackson. It was thick in there. They have, um, um, George, we was all having a great time. And I I just couldn't get over how big Errol Spence was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I seen and that. I, I, I'm not saying Terrence can't beat him. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, if you're asking me, the natural welterweight is the guy that I'm picking. The mm-hmm. bigger man. I'm going to show you something else. Terrence, I'm like, Everybody called him like, oh, he got all his talent, but he can do it because he can pick and choose when to fight. Mm. Ain't nobody ever, he never fought nobody this big that throws this many punches. Did you hear, did you hear what um, everybody talking about, oh, how good Terrence is, and they say Terrence is this, and Terrence is that. Did you hear what, um, who, 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 who was chosen, who was picked of all the guys they fought? What's the consensus about who's the bigger puncher? Kel Brook said that Errol Spence is a bigger puncher. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that'd be the guy to ask. He was in the ring with both of them. Yeah. I think Sean Porter is a, is a little salty because he didn't get a he didn't rematch. True. So I, mean, I, I really I really take everything he said with a grain of salt. I like Sean. But Sean ain't no different than anybody else. I'm gonna, get a little better. I would have been happy with a rematch, too. That was a great fight. Yeah, that was a damn good fight. Hmm. Um, now, now that Spence and Bud is made, where does that leave Keith Thurman? Where it left him before. He could have took, he could have fought both of these young men a long time ago. He was champion first. Now he's a Florida guy, and I can't say nothing about it. But the problem with these guys, everybody is, everybody want to be Superman, but don't nobody want to face Clipper Mm. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's. It's a good analogy, man. Yeah, everybody don't be Superman. I don't want to face Triple Night. Yeah. I want to be the very best fight in the world. So, so, a lot of people try to label a uh, key. Uh, well, a lot of people try to label Earl Spence and, and Terrence Crawford, the winner of this, is the best welterweight in the world. Now, they are. neither one of them took on Keith Thurman, or neither one of them got the Manny Pacquiao fight. So, is it really the best uh-huh. versus the best? Man, the Pacquiao, dude, let me tell y'all something. Stop bringing Manny Pacquiao up. I never thought much of Manny Pacquiao at 147. As a matter of fact, you can't, he can't never get no drug out of me because he chose to go up and wait and not, not defend his 135-pound title and win all four belts when he could with me. So, no, I don't think much of that. Not when it comes to that. Like, he did, was it a good fight? As a matter of fact, and this, he's a nine-time champion. Dude, let me tell y'all something. Where I come from, the man is the man. Mm. L. Spence and Ken Terrence Crawford are taking a chance at being the man. King of the hill. Keith Thurman, if Keith Thurman was, Keith, Keith Thurman lost to Manny Pacquiao, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Lost to Manny Pacquiao. And I'm going to tell you a big issue. I, I don't have a beef with him because I held the belt. But this super championship crap really hurts boxing. Mm. The super champion, regular champion shit hurts box. Because now you now a guy who's the super champion can just refuse to fight anybody, like Canelo's been doing for a long time. Um, I mean they 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 talking about uh Benavidez, David Benavidez and, and Canelo are in negotiations. What Benavidez do you think about gonna that? beat the sleeves off of it. <laughs> he gonna be he gonna beat him like a redhead mop. Wow. I said what I said. Let me tell y'all something. When, when, when Canelo was beating up on much smaller men, nobody said nothing about it. Now he's allowed his body to grow way up to where it is. Now he got a, now he ducking and dodging. I ain't never seen a man. He got more excuses than a man going to prison. Mm. But one thing about this life, baby, one thing about this life, 
ain't number but a few motherfuckers out in the world that I'll really tell you was that man. It was really that man. Mm. Really, really that man. Andre Ward was really that man. Mm-hmm. Ain't many of them that I can tell you that, that, that Andre, Andre Ward fought more than he walked away from. And, and and if you and if you and if you would look at him overall, he's the way better fighter than Logan. No one did the same. Tell me I'm wrong. You're right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right on that. Well, <laughs> Champ, we appreciate you for your time, man. Let the people know. <laughs> I, I, I know I, I know I blew up your spot this morning. No. I, I I we appreciate you for real, man. But dude, I'm a, here's the thing about it. I'm gonna say this. I won't keep, make sure people hear this. I, I'm an old school boxing fan. I came up. I came up in the barber shop with me in that group that was born in the twenties. Mm. My grandfather was born in 1928. My father was born in 1943. My mother was born in in, in the fifties. You know what I'm saying? So I came from old old time of life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My father watched Ray, Ray Robinson fight. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I came up in an old time of life. No, I'm, I don't I don't particularly play the, the feelings and emotions game. I don't do that. So I speak I speak facts outside my feelings. Even if I feel some kind of way about a certain guy because I, I, I know I know who they duck. Let's just say I know who the guys that y'all keep talking about duck and I can see a lot of these young guys doing the same kind of ducking mm-hmm. and um, I'm going to say this here. I had a sit down talk with Mike McCallum one day and Mike McCallum was talking to me and I said how, how do you I said did you, have you ever, did you ever tell us what you thought about him not fighting you he said yeah man I talked to him I tell him he said he come to me one day and he says and he says you're a great champion he said then why you don't fight me man why you don't let me make some of the money, man? He said, you, you, why, 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 why I don't get the chance to make the kind of money that you make if I was such a great fighter and you were such a great fighter. And th- that's what this guys like Mike McCallum who I always wanted to be like, that in my opinion, are just great fighters, that their records and their, their accolades will stand the test of time long after these other guys are forgotten. Mm-hmm. And I respect. I respect. So you gotta realize something. There's there are eras in boxing, we, boxing that we don't talk about. We don't talk about Benny Lennon like that no more. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But we still talk about Henry Armstrong. Mm-hmm. We, we we don't talk about. We we be talking about how great Henry Armstrong and Ike Williams was, but we don't talk about the guy named Willie Joyce that beat both of them. See, I'm a boxing historian. You can't just tell me about a guy and and tell me the guys are great when I, I know the history of boxing so look I want to see a great fight between Terrence because this clears it all up win lose or draw this clears it all up this clears it all up so I want to see the best I want to see the very best guys start to fight each other and truth be told Al Heyman can either kill boxing or revive boxing just by the fights that are made Yes, sir. Tell me, tell me I'm wrong. You're right. You're absolutely right. Well, champ, we appreciate you. Let the fans know where they can reach you at. You can, they can reach me at Nate Nat Turner Campbell on on Facebook. They can reach me at the Galaxy Warrior on Instagram. Um, I have two pages on, on TikTok. So one is Nathaniel Campbell. Oh, you'll see me. You'll see me on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got you. Pages. I got two pages on, on TikTok, but um, you'll see me on that. Both of them, are, I, I answer both of them. Um, I had to get a second page because they were they were on the verge of kicking me off because I can be kind of incendiary some of my some of my statements. <laughs> and I know that. We appreciate but, um, you, Chip. But they can also hit me up at at um, Nathaniel Campbell seven four seven at gmail dot com. Okay. Hit me up there and say anything they want to say to me about me, good or bad. <laughs> All right, Jeff. I'm going to reach out to you later, man. All right. Thank you, man. All right.